you guys stand so we continue singing? This song is just one of my favorites. It just talks about the blood of Jesus that is so precious. There's nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen? I was just, just singing out to God today and just singing. Just giving the praise and the glory that he deserves.
I don't know about you, but that, that song kind of wrecks you, doesn't it? I mean, if it wasn't for the word all, all to Jesus, I surrender. Now you, you, you brought something in here with you today. Can we just surrender that all to Jesus? God, we want that to be much more. We want all of this to be much more than an old hymn or a new song or just words on a big screen. God, we want that to be the cry, the prayer, the core of our heart today. All to you, Lord, we surrender. And God, each of us in this room, we, we're carrying a part of that, and we're at different places, but help us just, God, to take that next step, whatever that is, to surrender or resurrender, recommit to you, and we give it up to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, have a seat. <clears throat> I almost feel like we could just go home right now. <laughs> but I have this huge weight that I'm carrying. <clears throat> so, all right, so today I thought what I would do is... Uh, um, if you have a Bible, open to Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, and uh, what I thought I would do today is uh, sit on the bench, because I spent most of my athletic life sitting on the bench anyway, so, uh, you know, let's, let's make this happen. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about um, the Ephesians chapter 4, and we've been going through a series called New Things, and, and today we're, we're going to talk about a new view of us, part four, and that part four is that we, us, we are the body of Christ, and we're a body together. So our, our key verse is in Ephesians 2.10 that says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago, right? So, so we're, we're new in him. There's new things in our life. There's, there's the, we're a new creation. And not only individually, but together, we're new in Christ. And, and, and God has a plan. He, he planned this a long time ago, way before you, way before me. God's got this plan, and he says, I've got this plan for you. And I, I want you to do that. I've created you for this. And so today, we're going to kind of go into that and say, well, what is that? And, and through this series, what are those new things? And so we, we take the book of Ephesians, and I said, hey, you can break it down into like three sections. New you, new us, new ways to display God's glory, right? The book of Ephesians, you say, somebody says, what's Ephesians about? You say, but it's about a new you, new us, new ways to display God's glory. And we talked about you, the you part, and we've said that, that we are, uh, in Christ, we're blessed, we're empowered, we're a masterpiece. And then us, in Christ, we, the church, we are a new us, we are a family, we're privileged. And last week we talked about being fully confident in him, right? And so today, I want you to add in this phrase to this whole thing, this phrase, we are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. Now, we are the body of Christ. Emphasize that we are the body of Christ. So we're going to talk about what, what that looks like today. Now, I don't know about you, but I, we, we just did the 301 section in the Next Steps class. So if you were in 301, man, this is going to be like review for you. You've already got this. You're like, yeah, I already know what he's going to say. But let me ask you a question. How many of you today have a body? Raise your hand. Some of you are like, oh, Me. Come on, get up there. You have a body. You know it. You have a body. I can look. Yes, you do have a body. Now, how many of you, like me, you want that body fully functioning? Okay? You want, I mean, you want to know, okay, this is what you're called to do. When I say, when we go, you know, this is what you're called to do. You're called to, you know, hey, I, I want that fully functioning, right? 
So I want that, you want that. And if you went to the doctor today, he said, hey, guess what? We're going to remove one of those parts. Which one would you like to be gone? You're like, uh, yeah, well, uh, you know, I don't really have any spare parts. Like, I'm going to need those. You know, now they might need to slim down a little bit, right? We might need to be tucked in somewhere or something, but like, I, I want all those pieces. The body of Christ. We, we got to get this today, man. The body of Christ. We want this. We, we do. We want this like we want in our body. We want the body of Christ fully functioning, don't we? Don't we want every part doing its share? Every part filling in that, that calling of God and knowing what they're supposed to do? And so we, wanna, we, want the, the, we want people to pass by here. We want people to see this church not as a big red brick building on Clark Street. Where's your church? It's on Clark Street. No, it's all over the place. I mean, it's, it, it's us, right? We are God's people. We are the church. The church is people, not bricks in a building on Clark Street. This is where we meet together. This is an important place for us. Like say, this is the house of God, this is a sanctuary, this is a worship center. But we are the church, right? And we want people to know that we are a fully functioning body. Now, when we think of this, we're we're like a family. I love Jonathan talking about we're a family. Don't you love that about the church? It's a family. Now, I know you're thinking, man, I grew up in a jacked up family. I don't want family. (laughs) Well, if if you're part of this family, you you know it's kind of jacked up too, okay? So... But we're okay. We're, we're all right. We're a family, right? We're a family. And we are not just a family, but we are a filthy rich family. We are filthy rich in the grace of God. And, and we have the grace of God poured out on us, right? And we, that, that's what comes out of this family, the filthy richness of the grace of God. And guess what? We're fully confident in God. We're not, you know, it's not that, hey, you got this ability. I have, you know, it's, it's about God is able to do everything, Right? So we're fully confident in him, and today we're going to talk about being a fully functioning body of Christ. So we're going to read in first, uh, first we're going to read Ephesians chapter 4, and uh, as we read it, we're going to go into what I see as how to build a better bod for God, all right? So, so here, read it with me, and, and see what you think, all right? So we're talking about bodybuilding today, all right? So... Uh, Here we go, Uh, chapter 4, verse 1. It says, therefore, in the New Living Translation, therefore. Now you gotta get, you gotta know, uh, old Bible professor I had says, you gotta know what the therefore is there for. Right? So therefore, basically when you say therefore, doesn't that mean like everything I just said leads up to this. Therefore, based on everything I've said so far, this is what I want. And this is what the Apostle Paul is doing right here. Therefore, based on chapter 1, 2, 3, therefore, 4, 5, and 6. Here we go, all right? So therefore, because of you and us, therefore, here's what we're going to do. So we're kind of in transition between the us and the new ways to display. But here we go. Therefore, I, the Apostle Paul, A prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other. Making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Always keep yourselves united in the Holy Spirit and bind yourselves together with peace. We are all one body, we have the same spirit, and we have all been called to the same glorious future. There is only one Lord, one faith, there's only one Lord and one faith, one baptism. There's only one God and Father who is over us all and in us all and living through us all. Verse 7, however, he has given each one of us a special gift according to the generosity of Christ. That is why the scriptures say, when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Notice that it says he ascended. 
This means that Christ first came down to the lowly world in which we live. The same one who came down is the one who ascended higher than all the heavens so that, this, so that his rule might fill the entire universe. He is the one who gave these gifts to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. Until we come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature and full grown in the Lord, measuring up to the full stature of Christ. Then we will no longer be like children, forever changing our minds about what we believe because someone has told us something different or because someone has cleverly lied to us and made that sound like the truth. Instead, we will hold on to the truth in love, becoming more and more in every way like Christ, who is the head of the body of the church. Under his direction, the whole body is fitted together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. That's, this has always been one of my favorite scripture passages, talking about the church and what the church like the, a, a body, functioning together like a body. But I want you to get a couple things because we're going to talk about how to build a better body for God. But a couple things real quick with that. First of all, you've got to notice that this is a calling, that, you, that God is calling you into something. It's a calling on your life. And then it's described as a walk, a walk. Now in Ephesians, we're going to go in, 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 in chapters 4 and 5 and see that this Christian life is described as a walk. We're moving forward. We're in action, okay? So it's a walk. It's not a seat. It's a walk. It's not a service time. It's a walk. It's not just something that you say you believe, but it's a walk. you got to walk the talk, right? So, so it's, about, uh, it's about a walk. So, so as we think about how to build a better bod for God, I want to give you three things. Three things. Build a better bod for God. And, you know, can I just give you the fill-in right now? Three of them. And you're like, oh, good. Then I want to listen to the rest of the message. That's the fear of the speaker. No. So here they are. First one is we intentionally walk together in unity. Unity is the first one. The second one is that we identify and work, to get, work together in diversity. Identify and work together in diversity. And then my last point is that um, we will improve and add weight toward maturity. So three words I really want you to get today. Unity, diversity, maturity. Unity, diversity, maturity. All right, so let's talk about intentionally walking together in unity. Intentionally walking says, therefore, as a prisoner of the Lord, I beg you to lead a life worthy of your call. Lead a life, that's the word walk, okay? Walk worthy in a sense. So it's, it's, it's the word peripateo, which means to walk or to be a way of life. It's a lifestyle. And in that walk, Paul gives us some qualities. And, and underneath, I've given you those, those five qualities that I see from this passage, right? And I want you to look at those words. What are they? Humble, right? Gentle, patient, Making allowance, not giving allowance, making allowance for faults, and then making every effort, right? I want you right now, circle the one that you are no good at <laughs> in compared to the others, all right? So, so we say, man, we intentionally want to walk together in unity, and these are the character qualities that we need in order to walk in unity. But we got to be intentional about it because it, it doesn't work unintentionally. We've got to be intentional about that. Now, the word humble, the, the Greeks did not have a word for humble that described like we use it. They, they use the word humble to describe 
a, a person's, like, you're a slave, so you are humble. You're in this humble posi- position. You're, you're in this humiliating position. It wasn't until Jesus came that that word humble or humility actually became a virtue. So humble yourselves like Jesus. It wasn't until Jesus came that that actually like carried weight of virtue in a person's life. So, so humble. And it, it, hum, humble here, the word actually means lowliness of mind. And, and what it really means is that I place myself under someone else. I look at you and I see the value and the intrinsic God-given value in you. And therefore, I, I, I kind of want to lift that up, not myself. I place myself as a servant. I recognize the God-given capacity and value in others. And so to humble myself, I, I kind of see that person as, man, I want to I help you. I, it's a way to say, I want to help you. I want to reach you. I want to I I learn from you. I humble myself before you. Now, what's the thing that keeps that from happening? Pride. Our ego right? And we say your ego is not your amigo, all right? So amigo, or amigo, ego edging God out, okay? Get rid, you got to get rid, so intentionally, that humble part, and I need to grow that. I want, I want God to change that in me. I'm going to become more humble because my Lord is humble. And then the next word is gentle, now, it, it, some of the translations use the word meekness, and we guys look at that, for instance, and say meekness is weakness. No, meekness is not weakness. Meekness or gentleness is power under control. Power under control. And so it's, it's the idea, it's the disposition that I'm not going to assert myself for my rights, but I'm going to be, have that power under control. I'm going to be in control, under control. Now, those two words, humble and gentle, Jesus said, come unto me, all you who labor and heavy laden. And he said, because I am, take my yoke upon you, because I am gentle and humble. Those two together are awesome. Humbleness, gentleness, that's Jesus. So as I'm rooted, as we talked about last week, rooted in the love of Christ, what comes out? The fruit of humility and gentleness. If I'm not seeing that in my life, if I'm not becoming more and more humble, more and more at home, Jesus in my life, right? Then I'm not really rooting myself in Christ. I'm staying stuck in myself. Patient. How many of you would say the person next to you needs to be more patient? Yeah. I mean, I would say all of us need to become more patient, right? So patience, and and I love this, patience is long-suffering with aggravating people. Like you. Like God is with us, right? Wouldn't you say God is patient with you? Aren't you so glad God is patient with you? So if we're going to be like Christ, we are patient. Making allowance for faults. This is mutual tolerance, forbearing one another. Forgiving. That's what I love about Celebrate Recovery is it helps me walk through steps that make sure that I'm evaluating my relationships, all of my relationships, and I'm offering forgiveness or I'm making amends for those, those issues in my life, those relational issues. But it's making allowance for faults. And, and we, we can't do this, we can't have unity if we don't allow for faults within the body. Forgiveness is a huge factor to keep us growing together. Now, if you have a, if, how many of you are married? How many of you, because you're married, you've had to use forgiveness a lot? My wife's like, yeah, right here. <laughs> Woo! I'm just helping her grow. 
Okay, just helping her grow. And I'm patiently helping her grow, okay? So making allowance for faults. And then th- th- we got to get this, this, this quality. Making every effort. Making every effort. It's, this, is, this takes effort. Like, like that we're going to, because it says here, it says, always keep yourselves united in the Holy Spirit and bind yourselves together with peace. Always. Like, and and the, in the text here, it's actually really hard to put into English the, the, the word, the verb here, that's basically saying make every effort, like every ounce of your life, everything, like pour into that to make every effort to that, that unifying factor. So here's the deal. Someone's, we talked about this last week. We're in a family, we're in a family. Someone's gonna say something that's gonna hurt you. If you're gonna make every effort to make that right, what do you do? You go talk to that person. And you say to them, don't you ever hurt me again. <laughs> no, you don't do it that way. Some of you are like, yes, finally. No, so you go talk to that person. But typically what I do is I go and talk to somebody else first. And I say, man, would you pray with me? Because uh, I've been hurt. <laughs> and I just need you to pray. Because Deeger said something to me the other day. I was like, oh, Deeger. Well, I get it with Deeger. I mean, look at Deeger. I mean, yeah, okay. <laughs> What am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to go to Deeger and say, hey, man, can we, can we talk about this? I mean, you know, let's, let's, let's talk about this and, and work through that. that. That's me making an effort, right? Now, how many of you have known that someone else is mad at you? Like, you, you just know, hey, this other person, they're like, they're mad at me for something. Any, it ever happened to you? Yeah, you know, they're, someone's mad at me. I mean, they're mad at me. Like, I can tell, I walked by them the other day, and they were like, you know, you can tell. And so I, I'm, I'm supposed to make every effort here. So what do I do? I go talk to that other person again. I'm like, hey, you think something's wrong with Deeger? <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, something's wrong with Deeger. I can tell you what's wrong with Deeger. But what are you talking about, <laughs> you know? No. If I, if I think the other person's got something against me too, what's, what am, I'm supposed to make the effort. So in both cases, I'm the one making the effort. I can't be passive about this. I cannot, I, I got to give myself to that intentionally. Like if we're going to have unity, if we're going to walk together in unity, we got to make an effort for that to happen. We got to let Jesus work in our life, right? And he says, go take care of it. I don't care how high you got your hands in the worship service. If you got something against someone or someone else got something against you, go take care of it. And then come back and raise those hands, all right? Then come back and give that gift. Take care of it. I love how Eugene Peterson says this. He says, pouring yourselves out for each other in acts of love, alert at noticing differences and quick at mending fences. Love that. So, so here's the deal. It says that we're all one, right? We're one in Christ. There's one faith, one baptism. There's only one body. There's, not me- there's one. We're one in Christ. We're, there's only one God, the Father of everything. That's theologically correct. But oftentimes we practically do not remember that. And we forget that. That, hey, we're one. Like, sometimes we just got to hear, we're family. We're family. God brought us together. So let's be intentional about walking together in that. So you can be intentional by circling that that one. Like, I know you you need work in all five of them, okay? But circle that one. You can say, I'm going to be a little bit more intentional this week about that. All right. So... In, in, intend. So we're going to intend to walk together in unity. And then the second thing is we identify and work together in diversity. Work together in diversity. Now this is an interesting part <clears throat> because he says, however, 
one God, one faith, one baptism, all that one. He moves to, however, he has given each of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. Each of us, each. He moves from all to each. We're all one to, okay, now, however, here's what you have. Here's your part. So it's important that we understand that we're saved by the grace of God, but we also get that serving grace in a sense, and he gives that to us to serve the body of Christ. Now, who's the giver of these gifts? God. Christ. It says right here. He's the one that, that, that ascended. And if he ascended, he descended. Now, we can get into all kinds of theological stuff about where that happened, how that happened. I don't have time for that today, okay? So, I just want to say this. We know that Christ, that the God the Son became a person, so he humbled himself and stepped down out of heaven and became a person, and he was born as a person like you and me, and he grew up as a person like you and me. And the Philippians chapter 2 says that he took on the form of a human, but then he took on the form of a slave. He stepped down. And he, he was humiliated in the sense his humiliation process was to take him from God into the form, not, not, becoming, not being God anymore, but still being God, taking on the form of a human being, the form of a slave as a human being, and the form of that slave would be the form of a slave who dies on a cross, the most humiliating death. And he goes to the grave. So, so whatever you think about that theologically is that Jesus went from heaven to earth to the cross to die for you and me. He was humbled, his humiliation. And then after the resurrection, he ascended back into heaven, right? So through that, from being in heaven, descending and dying, and ascending back into heaven, all authority and power is given to him to then give gifts to the church. And it says here that he gave those gifts to the church. Now, Jesus is the one who gives you your gift. You don't say to him, oh, Lord, I want the gift of preaching because Pastor Ken's not that good at it and I think I could do a better job. And I'm like, hey, go for it. I might agree with you on that, all right? But you don't say, hey, Lord, here's the gift I want because I think that's the most amazing gift. He's like, no, here's the gift I have for you. It's the gift of hospitality. And you're like, no. I don't want to be hospitable. I want to live in my hostility. Okay? I don't want to be hospitable. Or I want to give you the gift of mercy. Oh, no, you don't. Because that's not me. I'm just not going to be merciful. He's like, yeah, you are. So it's, it's Jesus who gives the gifts. And when he gives those gifts, and it says that he gave gifts to the church, right? And those gifts were people. You see that? These are people, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Now, in Ephesians chapter 4, there's only four of those gifts mentioned. But we know through uh, 1 Corinthians 12, Romans 12, 1 Peter chapter 4, Ephesians 4 here, that there's different gifts that are mentioned. So this isn't meant to be these are the only gifts. Just like 1 Corinthians 12, is just, these are the only gifts. But he mentions these four as gifts that are given to the church, and they're different. There's, there's four different gifts. And we're not going to get into all the differences in that. But I want to say this. For, for me, pastor, teacher, and that's one gift. Pastor, teacher. That's one role within the body. It's not a pastor and a teacher there. It's pastor, teacher is the, is the original word. So it's one, one gift to the church, one role. And, and it goes on to say... Those gifts are for the purpose of what? Serving the body. Not serving ourselves, but serving the body. So the gifts, I, I have a gift from Christ, 
And it's, it's unique in the sense it's diverse. Here's where the diversity, it's diverse, it's, it's different. We have our, as our body has different parts, this body has different parts. There's diversity in the unity. And we're all to, to, to function together as that body and serve one another, the body of Christ. So think about this. Jesus gave you a gift that is uniquely for you, but it's for the purpose of unity in the body. Diversity, unity, all right? So we're different. We have different roles. We have different roles. We have different gifts. We talked about this in 301 today. But we use those to serve one another for the building up of the body. So we identify and work together in our diversity. It says, uh, 1 Peter 4.10, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. 1 Corinthians 12.7, but to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Your gift is not for you. It's for unity. Okay? So therefore, let's use our gifts. So if you don't know how to identify your gift, that's why we have the 301 class. Help you identify that gift. It's not for you, it's for unity. I love this, Henry Cloud said this, he said the space where someone's need and your gift meet, that's the space for service. And it might even be a calling. So I love that. So, we intend to walk in unity, and, and, we, and we grow in that diversity part too. But number three, we improve and add weight toward maturity. We improve and add weight toward maturity. It says this will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith that we will be mature in the Lord. Interesting part of this passage here, there's a distinction between being mature in the Lord and being a child. And a child, immature in our faith, is easily swayed by someone, right? Right? So someone says, well, here's what the Bible says, and they, they take a truth of, of maybe what the Bible says and use it to get you to do something that the Bible doesn't really teach. The reason you can be easily swayed is because you're not mature enough in your faith. So we need to grow in our faith. So we want to have tools, we want to help, we want to help people grow in our faith so that we're, we're, we become full grown, fully functioning as the body of Christ, full grown in our maturity. But it says you, you shouldn't be children any longer, but instead, now in the NLT, it says something like this, instead, speaking the truth in love, then you will grow up in all things in Christ. Speaking the truth in love. Now, in the original language there, the word that we would say speaking is not even in there, so it really literally means truthing in love. And it's a lifestyle, truth and walking in truth, walking in love, Everything's about truthing in love. <clears throat> now, how many of you would say, you know, speaking the truth, take those things, truth and love, some of you are more, more truthers than lovers. <laughs> some of you are more lovers than truthers. But we got to have those two together because truth without love is harsh. And love without truth is enabling. Okay? So he said, oh, I don't want to tell the person the truth because I love them so much. Yeah, you're not helping them. But then we think, well, you know what? I just need to go tell them the truth. I'm going to get in their face. So let me say this. How, how do we walk in truth and love? Well, what is truth? Jesus said, thy word is truth. Right? And what is love? God is love. So before I get in someone's face... How about if I make a commitment to get into the word of truth and let God fill me with his love and then I go speak to Deger <laughs> in love and in truth. Truthing in love. Now when we do this, it's amazing. When we do this, look what it says. This, this last verse here, it, it says if, if we're... As we're doing this, we're growing in this. 
it says, He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love, right? So healthy and growing and full of love. Isn't that the church you want to be a part of? Healthy and growing and full of love? I mean, you don't walk in here and go, man, this place is unhealthy. And it's not full of love. And it's not growing. But we want to, we want to be a part of a church like that, right? So truthing in love, but, but each part doing its share and, and bringing that together. Now, here's where we get into the, when I say adding weight, improving by adding weight toward maturity. As I grow spiritually, I feel like it's kind of get this picture, as if God is adding more weight to the barbell and saying, you can lift this. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. And he's like, no, you can do that. So I thought today what I would do is just throw 300 pounds on this barbell set here. How many of you think that I could lift that? (laughs) Oh, ye of little faith. And you of much foolishness. There's no way I could lift that. Matter of fact, let me try. Water? Lord Jesus, as we pray today. You ready? I'm not. Okay. Where do the hands go? All right. So, look, wait a minute. Wait, don't leave. My job, I'm the pastor. I'm not supposed to lift that. You lift that, all right? Come on. All right, so here's the deal. You got to get this today. This actually, Brent, this is your set, right? Yeah. Okay, so so Matt actually told me that he could lift 315 pounds. So we put 400 pounds on here. I don't know if I can do it. We'll see. It's all you, baby. It's all you. Yeah. 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 All right, wait a minute. Stay right here. Stay right here, guys. Stay right here. Man, I hate this guy. I hate this guy. I love this guy. No, here's what I want you to get. As a pastor... According to this passage, there's no way I can lift this by myself. I could have had these guys spot me a lot. <laughs> okay, they would have lifted it. All right, whatever you call that. But uh, my role as a pastor, really, is to get people involved in the heavy lifting. Okay? No, I'm not saying, hey, you need to do that because I'm above that. No, it's like, hey, I want to get you involved in the process, get you in that giftedness where you are. You can lift 300 pounds. I cannot. So let's let you do that, not me, because it would be really ugly, all right, and and, and hurtful to watch. But here's the deal. Who cares? I mean, who really cares how much weight we can lift on a bench? Matt does. Just good. But you know what really matters? Guys, come over here. Let's come over here. You guys get over here on this side. What we want to do is we want to lift 
this. Yes. The cross of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus said, if I am lifted up, all people will be drawn to me. So as we build a bod for God, it's about lifting up the cross so that people can come to know Jesus, right? Amen. So you guys ready to build a better bod for God? Yeah. Let's lift up Christ. All right, thanks, guys. Now, here's how we're going to exercise this today. Matt, I'm so glad you were able to lift that. That is... Sort of, Totally ruined the illustration. <laughs> Here's how we're going to exercise. We're going to do an exercise today. It's called coming to the table. You see, I said we forget who we are in Christ. We start thinking about that we're strong enough or we're not strong enough. We're able or we're not able. And it's about what Jesus did for us on the cross. All right? So we're going to do an exercise today. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he was in the upper room with the disciples, and it says he took a piece of bread, a, a loaf of bread, and he broke it, and he said, guys, this represents my body, which is broken for you. I want you to take it and eat it and remember me, because you're going to need to remember me. Forget about you and remember me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the deacons come on up. They're going to serve us communion today. So if the deacons are going to come up to serve, come on up. And I'd like you to bow your head right now. And as they're preparing the table for us, I want you today to get ready for this. I want you to prepare. The Bible says that we examine ourselves. And if you're here today and you've never invited Jesus Christ to come into your life, I don't want to tell you don't don't take communion. I want to tell you to invite Jesus to come into your life today. And then take communion with us. Okay? So we're preaching the gospel right here. And if you've never invited Jesus Christ to come into your life, right, right where you're at, with your head bowed, your eyes closed, I want you to pray something like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I, I know I've gone away. I've, I've done my own thing. And I don't really get all of this except that I know that you died on the cross for my sin. And I want to accept you. I want to invite you into my life today. I want you to take over my life. I want to surrender all to you. Lord Jesus, come in and be my Lord and Savior and to help me grow. And it's in your name I pray. If you're here today and you've already taken that step and you're saved today, but maybe you've kind of gotten away from that or you just want to rededicate yourself to him, remembering him, I want you just, just for the next minute here to pray something like this. Lord Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior and I want to live for you. And as we sang, I surrender all, God, Lord, you know in my heart that all right now is not surrendered to you. You know that part, you know that room, you know that place, and I want to surrender that to you. Lord, I want to recommit my life to you, re-surrender all of it to you, And I want to leave here today to live completely for you. God, help me take that next step. And Lord, as all of us take part in this communion where we remember 
your body and your blood that nothing except the blood of Christ saves us. We take that today in remembrance of you, fully in faith to you. God, I pray for each one in here today that we would know you and be more and more what you want us to be. And we love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. What I'd like you to do is just, just for the next minute or so, just kind of in an attitude of prayer, I'm going to have the, the deacons come and take the bread first, and they will bring it to you. If you're here today and you're not a Christian, this doesn't really mean anything to you except that it's a piece of bread in a, in a dish. Just pass the plate. It's okay. Just pass it along. But if you're a believer here today, and maybe you just became one by praying and inviting Christ into your life, then take that as the body of Christ, represent the body of Christ that you're committed to today. So I'm going to invite you guys. Just come on up and take a tray, and then you guys will come back up here, right?
with those disciples, Jesus said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take that together. We have the deacons come and hand out the, the cup. So Jesus said, drink this cup because it represents the blood of Christ, the only thing that takes away our sin, the only thing that cleanses us, nothing but the blood of Jesus. So just continue to remain in an attitude of prayer and, and worship. Take one of these and we'll take it together. First Corinthians 11, it says that Jesus said this about the cup. 
He said this cup is the new covenant between God and you, sealed by the shedding of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you do it. Let's drink this together. I want you guys to stand. We're going we're gonna to do that chorus, right? Because I know you wanted to sing that part that says, my chains are gone, right? You were like... So let's sing it together, all right? That's awesome. Have a seat for a second. When we do communion here, our tradition is to then, at the, after the communion, is to take a benevolence offering. And this benevolence offering is used to help uh, special needs within our, our congregation and in our community. So um, did you guys, I don't know if you heard this on the way in. Are we going to do I'll Fly Away? Is that, the, is that the one? Did you guys hear I'll Fly Away, that song? Like, when's the last time you heard that in this church? All right? So some of, how many of you have never heard that song before? You're like embarrassed to admit it uh, or something. No, but so they're gonna, we're going to do the benevolence offering. And as they're doing this, they're going to do I'll Fly Away. So just clap, join in, whatever you want to do. Okay, don't stand up because we want to make sure the, the, you know, the plates get passed. But uh, join in with this song, okay? All right, let me, let me pray. God, bless this offering and use it to meet some very specific and awesome needs within this community, God. Bless this, this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
sure she'll never end. I'll, I'll fly away. Man, you guys were sick. You, you guys know that song. Some of you were like flying out of here, all right? Woo, that was awesome. Hey, thanks for helping me do some heavy lifting today. All right, so uh, thanks for being here today. If you, if you need prayer, uh, we're, we're going to stick around here. If you need some prayer and you want to talk to somebody, one of us, come on up. If you accepted Christ, you prayed in your seat that you accepted Christ, I would love to know that, okay? So come on up and share that with me, all right? And uh, thanks for being here. Go out on the patio, sign up. We need, what, 30 people? We need candy. We need, we need help. So, all right, have an awesome part. Do your part. Have a great week. God bless you.